Sabub uh, scrimmage this week or last week, exhibition tomorrow. What what do you hope to get out of these? What do you look for yourself? Well, we want to get better. I mean, I think that's the that's the biggest thing. But playing against somebody different really helps you because you don't have guys knowing what what you're doing. You know, those guys play against each other so much, and they know they know the sets. They know, you know, they know all that stuff. And play against somebody new, and having to guard somebody who's going to do something else. And Dayton was good because Anthony's Anthony's a really good coach, and and uh, they they run really good stuff. Um, they were just young. They were. He's got a he's got a young team. Right now, um, are you dealing with on-court chemistry, getting these guys? I mean, basically, you got one team that knows what they're doing and another half a team that you're trying to teach what to do. How do you? you I'm just of, trying to remember their names. <laughs> I mean, we we got like we got 16 guys. Yeah, 15 now. 15 guys. I'm trying to remember their names. We got a lot of new guys. A lot of guys. Is that showing up on the court? Yeah. And you're kind of battling time right now. This one don't count tomorrow, but they're going to count soon. Well, I, Akron's going to be really good for us, and I, I think that, I think it's really good that it is an exhibition, probably for both teams, uh, that because they lost their point guard, and they they're going to have to break in a new point guard. Uh, we obviously lost our point guard, and and uh, so I think it's I think it's going to be good for Akron. I think it's going to be good for us, and they're also a team that's got really good size on the front line. So having playing against a team with good size on the front line, I think, is is more what we're going to see, you know, when we get into, well, obviously when we get into Big 12 play, but with with a lot of the people that we're going to play uh, preseason. Do you approach this like a typical game, scouting report, go through the whole gamut with your guys so they get conditioned to that when it, when it counts? Yeah, absolutely. Game? You know, when you – you, we've got freshmen who've never been through it. We've got transfers who have been through something, but I have absolutely no idea what it was, you know. And, and so, to to try to get them indoctrinated into what we do and how we do things, I think it's really important. So you're going to get a lot of this. Who who pays attention? Who reads the scouting report? Who goes through the walkthrough? All that stuff. I got a pretty good idea who does that now and doesn't do that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> better one well I mean we have pretty good facilities you know so to, for them to to uh, not know what's going on not go up and and say hey can I look at you know can I look at our man-to-man -man sets or can I look at our zone sets or hey, can can I look at, uh, at what we're doing in a two-three zone and what my coverage would be they could do that yeah. now the majority of them that have come in from elsewhere have never done that but what else do you do? I was going to say those junior college guys eat riding in the vans eating those cheese sandwiches, they don't have a lot of, a lot of those amenities. No, they don't. No, they don't. But they're hungry. Yeah. They're hungry. That's what I like about them. Yeah. Junior college guys, by and large, are hungry. They've been through it. I think it's the other guys. Speaking of uh, point guards, I mean, it looks like you might have three of them there. <clears throat> Give you some help throughout the season. Are you leaning one way or the other yet at this point? On well, you know, Keedy got hurt early. I mean, he's played through it, but but he's playing. He's been playing really with one hand, and and he he hurt his left hand, which so he can still shoot the ball and pass the ball with his right hand. But uh, he hasn't been he he hasn't been well since real early. Uh, and 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 the other two are feeling their way through you know I mean it's it's it, it's a lot more responsibility than what I think people understand that it is you know because you just not have to know what you're supposed to do you have to know what everybody else is supposed to do and get everybody else where they're supposed to start and and if they're not running what they're supposed to run you know during a, uh, a break in the action be it a free throw or ball out of bounds or whatever you'll see our guys running over there like you saw Deuce, like you saw, you know, the other guys that we've had running over there and saying, hey, man, 
you're supposed to be over here, get your, you know, over here. And and uh, when you don't know where you're going yourself, that's a pretty difficult thing to do. Yeah. I was kind of wondering because, I, you know, you, at this point last year, you knew you had something to induce. And obviously Jordan had, had started games, very experienced, knew what you wanted. So, I mean, you were obviously pretty well set at the point guard. Kind of being in a little different situation this year. How does that change you as a, as a, as a coach, or, or maybe uh, strategy-wise as, as a coach? Is that well, I, I, you have to you have to try to convince yourself to be more patient, yeah. which historically has not been one of my strengths. Uh, but I, I, I think I think it's that. I think patience. You know, but you, you've got to you've got to somehow um, ingrain in them how important it is. You know, because I mean, a lot of places, man, you lose and you go in and you get your food and you go to the bus and you know by the second stoplight they're back there laughing, carrying on. You get on our bus, they ain't, there ain't much going on back there. You know, when we lose. There. Just this point, where you have to do more, when they're particularly when they're uh, near you, call out more sets, help them out a little bit more. You feel like early on. I, I don't know. I don't know if calling sets is the answer. Okay. Um, if if you run a set, if if one guy is not where he's supposed to be, it's hard to run a set. So. You know, we, we've run, we've run a lot of motion. You know, motion, you, you you got a lot of choices. You know, you you come to the screen, you can curl the screen, you can reject the screen, the, you, the screener can slip it. I mean, you can do a lot of things that really doesn't screw things up so bad. Where if if you don't know what you're doing in a set, it, you've you've just pretty much trashed the whole possession. What have you found out about this team defensively? <laughs> Trying to find the right word, Bob. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're not very good. We're not very good defensively, and and that's why I think Akron will be good for us. You know, you 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 look. They've got they've got veteran guys. They've got a couple uh, transfer guys came in that were. Uh, very successful at their level, so um, I, I think I think they're going to be good for us. I mean, we we turned it up a little bit, uh, you know, against Dayton at the end, and again, it, I mean, they're, we're playing against a lot of young guys there. This is this is more a veteran team. Um, veteran teams ought to execute better. Uh, they ought to just plain be better, and and we we're we're sticking guys in and out of there. That um, there's a difference between guarding and guarding the way we guard, and we haven't figured out the way we guard yet. Is there potential there to be a good defensive team? It's, it's hard to tell. You know, it, to be a good defensive team, you can't give straight line drives. Everybody touches the ball, gets a straight line drive right now against us. I was researching your history a couple of weeks ago. But that was had, interesting. Well, I mean, you, you, you had one Cincinnati team that gave up 70 a game. And that team was ended up going to the tournament. I think you finished third or whatever in your league and won the league and then whatever. But at West Virginia, you've had a couple teams now in the last four or five years that have given up 70. Is that the way the game is being played? Is that the players that you're dealing with? What is it that's different than what you had before? We're in a much, much better league now. Okay. And, and the league we were in was very good. Don't get me wrong. It was, it, it was very good. Um, but this league... This league, if you if you go back and 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 look at at numbers, 
right? If you look at numbers, this league for as small a league as it is, because I think it's probably the smallest Power Five league, I think, is a mess. Yeah. The smallest Power Five league uh, in, in all of the Power Five basketball. And to have the most teams go to the NCAA tournament, year in, year out, to have uh, more first round picks, to have more draft picks, to have more guys playing in the NBA when we're half the size of some other leagues. Yeah. It says it says a lot. It says one, there's really good players in this league, and two, there's really good coaches in this league. My my first my first coaches meeting, I go in, I sit down, I'm looking around the table and I start counting and I'm like Holy, 60% of this of the guys in this league have coached in the Final Four. And then I'm thinking, 40% of them have coached multiple teams to the Final Four. And I'm like, wow, I hope some of these guys leave. <laughs> so then I come back the next year, 70%. We had seven coaches who had taken a team to the Final Four. So they're good and they're hard to stop, so you have to outscore them then, right? Well, I mean, I think scoring has a lot to do with it. But, I mean, you know, I, I think about it constantly because it, it just eats at me. Think about how many free throws we missed that would have sealed games. I mean, there's got to be four or five games that we're at the line and all we got to do is make two shots. And they can't beat us. And we missed them. And there, there was a couple times where we missed them and got the ball back and got fouled, then missed them again. We got to be better than that. And this group, as of today, is not even close to being as good as the group last year was. At the line. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. So we got a lot of work to do. And, and I mean, I, that's not. That's not saying we can't do it. That's just saying we, but we do have, we have a lot of work to do. Is there any way to simulate those in the game, foul shooting situations, or is it a matter of stepping up and drawing the occasion? Well, I mean, what are you going to do? If you miss it, go get on a treadmill? I mean, that's, that's about as, that's about as uh, far as you can go. I'm not sure you're even allowed to do that anymore, but we just don't tell anybody. Can't throw tomatoes at him. No, you can't. Your dad probably did that, right? My dad snatched you right by the ear. <laughs> you know, you, you're wondering, you're wondering when he let it go if you still had an ear. Bob, you went out and got a couple of rim protectors to help your defense this year. So, what have you seen out of them? Are, defensively at the rim, what, what can they do? I tell you what, you find out that. Uh, it's a lot easier to block shots at the low, lower levels than it is to block shots here. I mean, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they block a shot once in a while, but I mean, they're not. No, well, they're not. They're not Sags. They're not Derek. They're not some other guys that we've had. They're just the physicality is is what gets them. No. And they're not they're not used to that. This is a this is a really physical league. And you you have to get used to that. Which means you gotta you I mean your butt's gotta be down. You can't be standing straight up. You get standing straight up, you're gonna get knocked across the lane. And it you you you're under the basket and someone's leaning on you, how are you gonna go block a shot? If they're leaning on you, which they are, it's a different world. It's a different world. It's going to take them a while to get used to it, if if they indeed even do get used to it. We were, we had Kobe in here um, before. And he, he's bigger than I thought he was. He's thicker than, you know. Do you feel like you maybe flipped another rock and found another kid from Ohio, maybe down the road that uh, may have found one there? Well, he's a Canton McKinley kid, and, and Canton McKinley's history is unbelievable. 
I mean, when you when you look at schools that have produced players, it's unbelievable. The, the guys that have come out after him, though. He said he didn't get calls until you offered him a scholarship. Nobody really knew about it. I don't know how you hide it, Cam McKinley. A lot of people, a lot of people want to sleep. I guess I don't know. Um, you know I, if you can't get recruited out of Cam McKinley, I don't know. I don't know what's up when you when when you go back and think about. But, I mean, I grew up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, I when we left Morgantown, you know, I ended up uh, I was in Tuscarawas County, but the games were in Stark County, in Summit County. So I drove up there. I got, you know, some of my buddies, and we drove up there, and we played on the playgrounds up there. But there were players there, man. I mean, big-time players. When you guys first started looking at him, what, was he a freshman or a sophomore? Uh, actually, actually, uh, we, got a, we got a call from his high school coach, who was also Derek's high school coach. And so, so Andy called and said, you know, Hugs, I didn't know, you know, if he was he was going to be good enough. He said, I think he's good enough. I mean, you have to come see him for yourself, but I think he's good enough. And so, you know, we go see him, and he's good enough. How long did Andy coach him? Because he just moved there, right, a couple years ago, man. Really. He coached him a couple of years? Or? Uh, I think Andy's – I think this is Andy's third, third year. this year. Yeah. So, yeah, probably two. Surprise you that he's so good with the ball? Mm -mm. No. No. He just seems like a, a pretty self-confident kid for being as young as he's he is. a real quiet kid. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a real quiet kid. He's he's a he's a tough kid. I mean he's he he blends he blends in with <coughs> with the older guys well, you know because he's pretty much what you said he's. He's physical. He's he's got strength, and he's he knows how to play. It's never, it's never easy to go through life as a basketball player carrying the name Kobe, though. Hmm. I don't know. I never had to. <laughs> <laughs> I was always hey you. <laughs> hey, so hey was your first man. Yeah. Boy, boy, get over here. That's that was yeah. I thought my name was Boy for a long time. <laughs> what do you see now, uh, Kedrian? I mean, you mentioned he, he He's had been to fight hurt. through some injuries, but just his overall progression from last year? It's hard to tell. You know, I mean, I I think he's better. Uh, but, I, you know, he's pl he's been playing with one hand. So it's 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 hard to tell. He He is... He is without a question. If we line him up in a race, he's the fastest guy on the team. So, hopefully, he can get us in transition. You know, hopefully, we, he can get us some easy baskets. We got to get him healed up, though. You know, and it just seems like every time he starts to like feel a little better, he gets he gets hit again. How did, how did you wind? How did you get the job at Akron, and what did that stop on your resume? Mean, mean to you in your career? It's a long story. Um, okay, never mind. <laughs> I was I was the assistant at Central Florida. I was at Walsh, and Chuck Mayshock, very very dear friend of mine, who helped me tremendously. In the, in the coaching profession, just kept saying, you need to come down and be my assistant. You need to come down and be my assistant. I'm the head coach at Walsh then for, I'd been there three years. And uh, he says, you need to you need to take the next step. And he just, he wore me out. And I just finally said, all right, I'll go. Didn't want to. And, and, and then we got down there, and it wasn't anything like we were led to believe it was going to be. <laughs> no, and, and, uh, Chuck sold you one, huh? Oh, big time. <laughs> he was he was good at it. And um, I did everything I could do to help Chuck, you know. And I went back to Ohio and recruited some kids. And um, and then 
Chuck was going to get let go. And he knew it, I knew it, everybody knew it. And I'm like sending resumes out everywhere, you know. I was, I thought I could get a D2 school maybe in over in Western Pennsylvania, you know, somewhere because there's a few of them over there. And I went home one night and June said, somebody on the phone for you. And uh, I got, I got on the, I got on the phone and, and the guy said, uh, you know, the Akron job's going to open. And I said, no, I didn't know that. Are you interested? I said, yeah, I'm interested. He said, I'll get back with you. Hung up. So I go about a week and a half, two weeks, don't hear anything. And go home again. June said, phone's for you. Guy said, you ready to come home? I said, yep. He said, uh, okay. I said, excuse me, sir, could I ask who you are? <laughs> he said, I'm Dominic Gazetta, the president of the University of Akron. I said, oh, yes, sir, I'm all good. So they had, they had like 11 guys or something like that in for an interview on, on a Wednesday. I went in on Thursday. I was the only one. And the assistant AD said, you know you're going to get the job. I said, I don't know. The guy just called me. I'm not sure who it was. I mean, he said he was the president. He said, oh, no, it was the president. He said, you're going to get the job. So I go over to, he takes me over to see the president. The president said, just don't, don't piss anybody off. Oh, and I said, no. so I went around, talked to, you know, these different people that he had me talk to, and I went back over. And uh, I called Coach Miller, and I said, can you call the president and, you know, make sure that, and, you know, Eldon's at Ohio State then, and he calls. And so, and then he calls, he calls me, and I said, what, what did you what did he say? He said, uh, he asked me what your two favorite colors were. And I said, why did he ask that? He said, I don't know. But that's what he asked me. I said, what did you tell him? He said, hell, I don't know. And so then uh, the last, t last time I go in to see him in his office, he said, what's your two favorite colors? And I, I had, they told me, don't say green because he hated green. So I said, uh, blue and gold, because Akron scholars were blue and gold. He said, you're hired. <laughs> hired me right there. That's how I got a job. Did the, um, the Actually, call from the president, right? And did, how did you ever find out how the president found out about you? The, well, the president was on the board of trustees at Walsh. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, he he knew about me and he had seen us play and. And you didn't know him at all, even when he was at Walsh. No. <laughs> and where did the dairy cow come in at Akron? Who? The dairy cow. Did you have to? Oh. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah, it's good. We nobody went to the games, you know. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get people to go to games, and so I'm going to all these companies and I'm trying to sell them tickets, so that they're they'll send their employees to the games. So I go to, to I think it was a Ryder Dairy. I go to Ryder Dairy and the guy's like, hey, listen, you know, we, we only have a small advertising budget, whatever. I said, well, I came in, I got, there's a big old cow out there. And he said, yeah. And I said, what if you could put the cow in front of the arena? He said, how long? I said, I, mean, I don't know, a week or two. He said, okay. He gave me their entire budget, their entire uh, advertising budget, and he put the cow out there. I thought it was great. You know, we get all these tickets, so that was at Akron. So I'm sitting in the office at Akron, I get a, I get a call, I said, now, now we got another president, Bill Muse, he took over for Dominic Gazetta, and he called and he said, who put the cow out there? <laughs> I said, I did. Get rid of it. I said, wait, well, I need to talk to you about this. I said, can I come over and talk to you? He said, yeah. So I went over and told him about, you know, advertise, they, I got their whole advertising budget. We're going to pack the place, you know. They had no money at Akron. Still don't have money at Akron. But, you know, we were generating some income because we were, I was out 
selling tickets. And so he said, okay. He said, but I'm telling you, the minute that game's over, get rid of that cow. I'm like, all right. Take it home? No, take it. Bob, I'm telling you, it wouldn't have fit in here. It was a big cow now. A big one. Inflatable cow, right? No. No? No, it was a, like a, a plastic or whatever. Okay. Not plastic, but some kind of deal. And it, they ro it had rollers on it. They rolled it in. Well, what was the hook? You you get like milk or something if you went to the game, or what was? No, the... you got to sit and watch me coach. What you don't think that's enough? Absolutely. <laughs> well, the cow, though. I mean, what was? No, the it wasn't hook? a little cow. Now, <laughs> it, we could not have gotten it in the building. There's no way we could have got it in the building. But what's the hook? Get there? Having a cow outside to get you advertising. Know, I advertising. Got I got you. You don't get anything from it. You just see the cow. I mean, watch well, coach. yeah, I mean, everybody who, everybody, that, that was a, 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 that street was pretty busy. I got you. So there was a lot of cars going back and forth on that street. So, so what, did, what did Akron do to get, I mean, your stay there obviously caught somebody's eye. To stay at Akron for that long? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, no, nobody else wanted me. I mean, I had I had offers to go be assistant some places, but I didn't want to be an assistant anymore. I did that with Chuck. I was miserable. You learned a lot about yourself as a coach, though, at Akron, right? The things that you I learned a lot about myself at Walsh. Yeah. I mean, you're pretty dumb if you don't learn. We got to be pretty good. I mean, yeah. we we were we got to be pretty good, and I had a I had a great situation. You know what? When Jim Dennison was the AD, he, he was the football coach when I went in, and he's, he's one of the, the great people of all time, and it was a great football coach, a great football coach. And he came in and watched us practice the first couple times we were practicing. I had, I had a seven foot two guy. He lasted all of about 20 minutes. <laughs> he said, Coach, I can't do this. I <laughs> said, so I didn't think you could, but he's gone. My Frank Jesse was my assistant. Frank was Frank was uh, teaching. He was he was he was teaching. He was leave school when it was over, come down and help me. And so he comes in. He goes, I just saw Greg Stevens walking out the door. I said, Yeah, he quit. He said, Wow, that was quick. The next day comes walking in and he said, John Gordon just walked out the door. I said, Yeah, he quit. He was six eleven. He's gone. There was one more. And, and then the third day, Kurt Schaefer walks out. So Coach Dennison's watching practice. He said, comes in office. He said, I think I can help you. And I said, what do you got? He said, he said, well, Chris Kelly, he's, he's, he's big and strong. He's only, you know, 6'2 or 3, probably 6'3, but strong. He could really re help you rebound. I said, we'll take him. And he said, Russell Holmes. Now, Russell Holmes was the last one cut by the Steelers two consecutive years. And that was hard because I'm watching, and I want him to make the Steelers, but I want him to come back too. <laughs> and, and so, uh, I mean, he, I, I had those two guys. And but you were resourceful, and that's helped you. That's you, you, Walsh and Akron, you had to be to do what you did, and it's carried on through your career. I had those two guys that coach Dennis and, and, and Ronnie Taylor. Ronnie Taylor was a tight end. Chris Kelly was a tight end. Russell Holmes was a linebacker. Those those three guys. If I didn't have those three guys, we wouldn't have won anything. 